Hey, thank you everybody. I'm going to tell you a little about myself, because uh, apparently I have this mic. I like to eat Chinese food, but sometimes it doesn't agree with me. Like the other night, I stayed up for four hours arguing with a spring roll. I also like to eat endangered species, because I like my food rare. It's kind of a bummer, though. I go to my favorite restaurant, I order my favorite food, and the waiter says, I'm sorry, ma'am, that dish is extinct. <laughs> what else about me? I have a green thumb. The doctor recommends amputation. I gave that two thumbs down. Well, one thumb and a stump. That's a good joke. It's a little grotesque. Uh, I was in New York one time at rush hour. I was in the subway. And I was told, don't make eye contact with anybody. So I didn't make eye contact with anybody. And it took the guy forever to figure out my sandwich order. <laughs> I also do improv in addition to stand-up. Thank you, we have an improv person here. Yes, and um, I got kicked out of my last improv troupe though, because I was planning ahead and you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> they accused me of premeditated improvisation. <laughs> Improv in the first degree, they call it. I'm in the tech industry, so I follow tech news. Uh, I heard Microsoft is going to compete with Roomba. They're going to make a vacuum cleaner. The first Microsoft product that doesn't suck. <laughs> I hate Microsoft. <laughs> I can I can do a whole thing. Um, Sometimes I lay awake at night and I wonder, do ghosts have near-life experiences? <laughs> it bothers me thinking about that. And sometimes, you know, sometimes with comedy you can make analogies with things that are funny. And I discovered you can make anything an analogy to a fart. You can compare anything to a fart. You can find something. For example, wine is like a fart because it can be full-bodied and fruity. <laughs> Sex is like a fart because it relieves the pressure for a little while. And kids are like farts, because other people's are always more obnoxious than your own. <laughs> a little bit more about myself. Um, I'm actually transgender. Uh, when I was, you know, until the age of 47, everybody thought I was a guy and I just kind of went along with it. When I was born, the doctor said, it's a boy. And my improv instincts kicked in and I'm like, yes, and. <laughs> it's time to edit that scene, though. Uh, so yeah, I studied electrical engineering, which is a very stereotypically male thing to study. We have an E here. Good, I'm gonna shit on engineers. <laughs> Did you know engineers are slightly more likely than average to be transgender? I only found this out recently. Hang on, hang on, hang on. But we're way more likely to be terrorists. <laughs> so if you know somebody who's going to go into engineering, tell them pick transgender, it's better. <laughs> That's right, my degree is double E and my cup size is double A. <laughs> this is 20% big pharma, 75% structural engineering, <laughs> and 5% strategically applied bronzer. I had to get that off my chest. Because I don't like to put up a false front. When I came out to my mother, she was very supportive, uh, but she was, had some weird questions for me. Like one time I was installing a ceiling fan for her, and she said, so tell me, when you're a girl, are you still going to be able to do this? And I said, yes, the lobotomy is optional. She was worried about my safety. I get that. I'm a parent. I worry about my kids' safety also. She was really worried, and I said, come on, Mom, this is Ottawa. It's pretty liberal. What's, what's the worst that can happen? Like a gang of cannibals setting upon me or something? She said, well, it could happen. And that's my mother. Um, and I said, well, no problem. Nobody wants to eat hormone-infused meat. <laughs> or trans fats. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of people, when I tell them I'm trans, they, they kind of 
they want to know, have I had the operation? You know, they don't want to come out and say it because that's a dickish thing to do. So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but they wonder. So I've decided I'm going to have the operation. And the reason is, when I was eight days old, I'm Jewish. So they took a tiny little bit off when I was eight days old. And at age 51, I'm finally deciding, you know what, I like that. I'm going to get the rest done. <laughs> So in terms of LGBT, I identify as T, but I'm not very activist. I was more activist. I formed a political party to advance our cause. It was call called the Tea Party. <laughs> the problem is, we just had these confused right-wingers trying to join. <laughs> and all our members crossed the floor of the opposition anyway. <laughs> um, <coughs> I like uh, sometimes reading some of the right-wing news outlets, though, you know, because you read the liberal press, or even the mainstream press, it's, it's depressing. Trans people are discriminated against, we're, we're victimized, we're bullied, we're murdered, we, you know, discriminated against in jobs, it's terrible. But you read Breitbart, and it's like, holy shit, we control the schools. <laughs> we control the media. I'm Jewish, so I already knew I controlled the media. It's, it's uplifting, it makes me feel better. Uh, some right-wingers even say that we're destroying civilization. That's power! <laughs> Can you imagine Kim Jong-un? He doesn't need nukes. He just needs to put on a dress. Civilization destroyed. Yeah, so I do have kids. My daughter's uh, starting university. Uh, so she asked me for a fridge for her dorm room, so I said, yeah, I'm cool with that. Then she asked me for a goose feather filled comforter, and I said, I'm down with that. <laughs> then she asked me for a completely blank notebook to do calculus uh, equations in, and I said, no problem. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Delayed reaction. <laughs> Finally, we were done, and she said she was hungry. She said, I feel like chicken and lettuce in a tortilla. I said, okay, but that's a wrap. <laughs> Thanks, Sunday and Skull. Have a good day. <laughs>